Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial talking about this lighting a room animation. I hope you can observe that there is a delay uh, in this lighting and the darkening event. And uh, this was initially asked by a user in the Discord server. And uh, after talking about the principle, he made this animation, which I think very interesting, so I replicated that. Uh, this animation is not very realistic, neither practical, but I think this is a very good opportunity to talk about the recast node. So let's start. So here we in Blender, and this is a very simple setup. I have a recast demo collection uh, in which I have a plane and I have a sphere. We are going through the initial question asked by the user in the Discord server, and then we will move on to do our animation. Okay. So basically his question is that uh, can recast behave like a kind of lighting source? So for example, I have a point light and it's shining the light uh, to this sphere and this plane. So by theory, that uh, the light should uh, be blocked with this sphere so that there must be a part of the plane being darker. So this was the initial question. So here, let's do this kind of a setup. Uh, I have a node tree object, so we select that and add a geometry node tree. So I delete this group inputs. I can import this recast demo collection into, so that I can use this collection info node to replace the initial objects in the collection. Okay, and then I'm going to just move up our empty. We are going to treat that as a lighting source. In order to access the information of these instances, we need to realize instances. So it becomes an actual mesh that we can evaluate. And then in order to evaluate this kind of light rays, uh, we are going to use this raycast node. Here, let's talk about this raycast node. Uh, it's very similar to many sample nodes we have. For example, we have sample nearest and we have a sample index. Uh, we also have many other sample nodes. I'm not going to discuss yet here. Uh, the difference is that we're just using different methods for sampling. In this particular case of this raycast, we are shooting a ray from our source geometry to a target geometry. So there can be a human body, there can be a ground, there can be a mountain, it does not really matter. So, but it, this is basically the principle. Uh, you can find some similarity between this source position and the sample position. Uh, they are bas they basically mean the same thing in this case. Okay. And this is a built in field. Uh, as you can see, it contains a kind of solid color, but it's a diamond shape. Uh, this means we have a uh, built in position attribute inside. And as I've discussed about the principal field in the past, uh, this node by itself contains no data. This node by itself contains no data. The data actually comes from this geometry. That's why when we are working with the viewer, you must link with geometry in order to preview this position data. For now, this position data is showing the position value for our recast collection geometry. But uh, if it's linked with a UV sphere, then the value of this position attributes will be different because the geometry becomes different. This concept is very important here because we are trying to do something opposite. As I've mentioned earlier, by default, this raycast is a shooting ray from our source geometry. So we shoot a ray from this sphere, this plane, and so on. Okay. However, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the goal we try to do here is we shoot a ray from this light source to this collection. So we're doing it in an opposite way. That's why we need to take these realized instances into the target geometry because the geometry itself becomes a target and we need to use this empty to replace this source position. So here let's intake this empty 
and we automatically create a meshing uh, object info and we set that to relative and we use an location to replace this source position so now we are shooting a ray and this ray must go at this uh, 0 0 negative 1 so it's directly downwards and every point is doing this action so every point is starting from this empty and it shoots a ray downwards so now if we look at this is hit we should be able to see everything is actually white because we shoot this position okay uh, to give you a kind of information about what's really going on uh, we can try to use this hit position to illustrate where does all this kind of mesh actually hit so we take a set position and by default there is a position attribute inside that's why it does not change anything by default but we can use a mix node to visualize the change between our origin position to this hit position and we can plug that to the position as you can see by manipulating this factor we're mixing these two status uh, initially we have this initial position and then we converge to this hit position and you can see this is a tiny point because this is a straight ray from our empty downwards to hit the top of our sphere so basically this is the idea now everything looks very boring that's why we're going to do something different instead of shooting a ray from our empty directly downwards I want to shoot a ray from our empty to every point on our uh, target geometry okay and the way to do that is basically just a simple vector mass we use our position to subtract our object info location so that we are creating a directional vector and we replace that into the ray direction to explain this math better you can think that we are using the location of our empty to subtract with world origin which is 0, 0, 0 so that we are creating a vector towards our empty this is equally true if we are using other location for example we have a 1 1 1 to subtract our empty and then we are actually creating a vector from our empty to this 1 1 1 location that's why we're shooting a ray to our target geometry using this vector math. However, this method is not perfect. I think this is a kind of a bug because you can see these kind of black lines. I already reported that I hope it can be fixed in 4.0. But this issue only occurs on point domain. It will be fixed if you switch to face domain. So currently this is the idea. However, this is still not what we are looking for because if this is an actual light source, then the light should be blocked by this sphere so that we are having a kind of dark area at the bottom of this plane. So basically we do not only want this ray to hit our target geometry but it also hit in a correct position. So to evaluate that, uh, we are basically measuring the distance of our hit position. So we can take a distance of this hit position and it should be low. So we take less than and now if we look at this hit distance and if we increasing this value just by a little bit 0 0.01 then we can actually see the effect uh, and as I mentioned it uh, should be all right if we're using face domain to remove all possible bugs so now we can actually see the effect of this lighting source on our geometry and this is completely procedural it's, it looks like we are really creating a shadow using this light source 
because we are having this magnifying effect of a shadow. Uh, looks pretty cool. Uh, and uh, to smooth that out, you can just use a subdivision surface or whatever other things. But uh, basically, this is the concept. So now we have a basic understanding of this recast setup. Uh, we can use a different collection. For example, I have a Lightroom model. So I just import this collection and replace with the original collection for of our demonstration. So now if I uh, disable the original collection, you can see it's uh, a little bit distorted due to our subdivision surface. We can subdivide that instead. Uh, as you may notice, since we're doing a setup uh, in geometry, so every parameter is geometry based. So we have to subdivide a lot of it. That's why I mentioned at the beginning that this setup is not very practical. Uh, it would be better if we can maybe simulate in shader. But uh, currently this is what we are having. And you can see actually it immediately works as our expectation. It looks kind of ugly due to many different reasons. For example, it's, uh, uh, how should I say? Uh, it's very sharp because of the subdivision level, but you can improve that. Uh, other thing is that uh, we can blur this attribute. So let's take a blur attribute and I'm going to uh, blur with this less than. So now I can see there is a kind of a gradient being created. So let's increase the amount of iteration. Then you can see it becomes a smoother and a smoother. We have uh, this kind of a gradient. Uh, but you can also see that it causes some inaccuracy that this gradient is um, expanding two areas it should not be. So we subtract it to shrink this gradient a little bit. Maybe something like this. Okay, so we get this kind of idea. And if you really do not like this kind of gradient, you can still use the points. You will have some bugs, but over time, I guess it's just uh, not so important. Okay. So it depends on what you try to do. Um, but there are many different ways to manage it. And now we have this basic setup of this lighting and we can try to simulate a process so that uh, there is a delay of this lightning, a lighting and a darkening effect. So here let's add a simulation zone. So we can take a simulation input and I need a simulation output. I can delete this view because we're trying to view with the actual material. And this recast value can be generated inside this simulation output because we are going to add a minus value inside. And outside I'm going to store name the attributes so that we can export this lightness value to our shader. So let's take a set material. Let's add a material and set that to emission shader. So let's open the shader editor. I have this emission shader. Let's take an attribute and take an L. So now if we visualize with material preview, we can see this effect. But there is no brightening and darkening events going on because everything is being just set with this recast every frame. There is no actual simulation which is going on. We have this value output back to the simulation input, but we are not using this 
value from frame to frame. So now what I need to do is just to add this old value to our new evaluation. And uh, look at how this gray area is being changed when I actually play this animation. As you can see, it brightens. And if we take a bloom, then you can see originally there is no real bloom effect because it's kind of gray. But if I play this animation, it does not only becomes white, but it actually glows more and more because the value is keeping adding itself. So this is the concept called the parameters within simulation zone. It turns a set value to a velocity of changes. And in order to make these changes very slow, we can use a clamp or we can use a map range. The whole idea is to decrease the velocity. So let's take a 0 0.01. So now it becomes very gray. But if I play this animation, you can see it slowly brightens. Okay. And we can add the duration of our animation. And of course, we can also clamp these final results to make it zero to one so that it does not really bloom too much at the end. So this is something what you can do. And uh, next, we're just uh, set a path of our empty. Let's just uh, randomly add a nerves path. And I'm setting some points. And I subdivide this area. So something like that. Uh, this is just a demonstration, so it does not need to be very serious. Okay, something like this. And I should see my nervous pass. Yes, this is it. And I can put up my empty using a follow path to select it. And I'm going to fix the position. So I keyframe from zero and you finally move to the end. So now if I play this animation, you can see it brightens up and it keeps light brightening this entire room, something like this. And what I want to do one more thing is to multiply the old value, maybe 0 0.8 or 0 0.95. So it will slightly darken itself after this light is leaving the old area. So now if I play this animation, you can see it brightens up, but over time it gets darker and darker. And finally it becomes black again. And the rest is basically parameters. You can try to tweak more values. So basically higher the value, longer the time it will retain the brightness. And let's bump up the velocity. So now it becomes very bright. And after this light leaves, it slowly darkens itself until it becomes black. Okay. So that's why I hate working with simulation because you have to keep changing these parameters, play the animation and the change the parameters and so on. But uh, this is basically the concept. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I probably see you next time. Bye bye.